This is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, verses 12 through 18. The section begins, I, the teacher, Kohelet, the gatherer, the leader, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. Back to the first verse when we referred to perhaps Solomon, the wise one. So we put the, the backdrop of Solomon's narrative in place. The story goes, I applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. Given the gift of wisdom, Solomon tries to figure out everything. The conclusion is, it is an unhappy business that God has given to humans to be busy with. Well, there's a happy conclusion, huh? It's an unhappy business that God has given to humans to be busy with. There's no room for false optimism here, no rose-colored glasses. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun and see all his vanity, smoke, mist, and chasing after wind. You can't ever catch the wind. The breath and the smoke appears and then vanishes on the wind, and that's what life is about. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking can't be counted. In other words, if you don't have it, you can't count it. But you know that there's a lack. So the teacher says, I said to myself, I have acquired great wisdom surpassing all who were over Jerusalem before me, and my mind has had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And I applied my mind to know wisdom and to know madness and to know folly, and I perceived that this also is but chasing after wind. I explored every aspect of human life, from the good, wisdom, to folly and foolishness. I looked for everything. And the conclusion in verse 18 is, for in much wisdom is much vexation. The more that we know, the more that we learn, the more we discover we don't know. The more that we learn, the more questions we have. The deeper we go, the deeper the hole seems to become. H have you ever found this to be true? It really is. And the second half of that verse, and those who increase knowledge increase sorrow. Because the more you know, the more suffering is allowed to come into our being because of what we don't know, what we've discovered, or the truth that we've found. Why do the evil thrive and the good people don't? Uh, why do good things happen to bad people? Uh, why do bad things happen to good people? We can ask those questions endlessly, and the more we find answers and pick at it, the more frustration and suffering that we can have. It is an absolute truth of human existence. It seems to me that this uncovers a truth that says, if our faith tells us that we will never suffer, that we will never have pain, then we're not telling the truth to ourselves. We will bear the pain of the world because we come to know it more deeply each day which is why we pray and why we worship and why we work and serve in the world. So Kohelet, the teacher, with Solomon's story firmly in the background, tells us it's not creation that will give you meaning. Uh, it's not novelty, things that are new that will give you meaning. How about knowledge? Mm, that's not going to do it either. You may remember that Solomon asked for wisdom and God was so pleased that he gave him double measure, made him the wisest king of all. Uh, there's that story of the, the two women who come fighting over an infant into his court. He's asked to adjudicate the matter, which one is the mother. And so he, in kind of shocking wisdom, says, all right, well, if both of you are the mother, then I'll cut the baby in half and give you each a piece. 
knowing in wisdom that the mother who loves the baby the most, the woman who is the most loving and the one who is given him birth will say, no, let her have it. She will sacrifice her right for the sake of the child. And so when that's what happens, he gives the child to its proper mother. But Solomon never finds peace. Uh, Solomon never finds fulfillment. Even though peace is part of the kingdom, he doesn't fight many, if any, wars. When he comes to the end of his life, well, the kingdom is divided and his family is a wreck and he hasn't found anything that gives him meaning. What he's come to conclude is that the more I know, the less I understand. And boy, I can identify with that at my age. You're not going to find what you're looking for in your own strength and in your own merit. You're not just going to discover the answers, no matter how hard you look or how many books you read. But grace, God's grace, well, that can make all the difference in the world. So by rejecting all of these other things, by getting them all out of the way, by clearing off the bookshelves, we sit before God and we wait. We wait for God's grace, and that may be our salvation. Let us pray. Gracious God, the more we know, the more we don't. The more we possess, the less we have. The greater we search, the longer the road. Help us, Lord, to settle before you and wait for your grace instead of trying to find our own path on our own. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.